do dry pour mixes really work? What is all the internet rage? Can you use it without pre-mixing? I understand the struggle. Mixing and straining is difficult backbreaking work. You're adding the concrete mix, you're adding the water, you're have to, having to stir it up. It would be so much easier, less intimidation factor if a homeowner could just pour dry, then add the moisture second. So let's compare the two. We have two forms, approximately one foot square each. Stick around at the end of the video when we strip down these forms, we will compare the traditional pre-mixed wet concrete against the cured dry pour method and we'll see the differences, see if they're equally strong and if they're practical for a homeowner. Now the standard depth, the best practice for like a sidewalk or stepping stone pad is four inches. These forms are approximately three and a half inches. But I do think that's gonna be close enough for our experiment and our comparison here. Homeowners wanting to do their own concrete pours going to be about four inches thick. We're going to simply pour it on this PVC table first just to look at it, strip the forms, and, and compare the two. Let's get to mixing the traditional wet pour first. Concrete can be a bit corrosive. You really should wear gloves for best practice. Now when somebody says they're mixing cement, they're actually uh, misspeaking. Concrete is the total of the cake, the total of the recipe. Concrete is made of Portland cement, sand, aggregate and water. Now aggregate is simply small stones. It can be sand, but typically it's going to be small stones. That's your aggregate. Now if you're mixing per the manufacturer's instructions, they'll tell you exactly how much water to add per bag. A lot of people just to make it up themselves, you want a creamy consistency, not too wet, not too dry. It will also depend on several factors such as how dry or wet it is outside. All right, I get it. If you're pouring a whole sidewalk, that's going to be a lot of bags. That's backbreaking work. You can rent mixers, of course, but this is the intimidation factor that homeowners don't want to get into. They want an easier method for sure. Most DIYs, their inclination is to add more water to make it very creamy and easy to work with, and that weakens the concrete. You do want it fairly stiff. Here, we're going to wrap on your form. That gets out air pockets, causes it to settle and your edges will look a lot better. You'll be glad you did this later. Kind of brings the cream to the top to give you a better finished surface. So screeding, screeding is simply going back and forth. You fill that in a little bit more there. We're just finishing it with wood. Of course you will use metal troweling tools and you would get it really smooth and then do a final broom finish if it was a walkway patio or something like that. We're just gonna leave it like that so we can compare it to the other dry pour. Okay, on to the dry pour. This method better be easy. I used all my gas on the first one, all my energy on the first one. <laughs> this one better be easier. So when these dry pour videos that are going crazy all over the internet, most people are pouring forms and then they're just screeding it off. Um, I've even seen people just remove the topsoil and use the dirt itself as the form. Probably not a great idea, but I understand it's saving time. We'll see what the results are. I suspect the dry pour won't be as strong as the traditional wet pour, but we'll find out. That's why we're doing this experiment. Okay, this is what everybody's going crazy about. You don't have to get messy. You don't have to pre-mix. You're literally just gonna screed off. Okay, that's literally it. I'm not gonna touch it. I'm not gonna get fussy with it. The whole point is to save on labor. Now we're gonna damp it. So here's the key. You want a mister, you want very gentle. I've even seen people do this with little plastic spray bottles. We're just trying to get the surface to firm up slightly. After it firms up, you're gonna come later and do subsequent rounds. Um, and trust me, the water, the moisture will leach all the way to the bottom. It'll suck up that moisture and it will eventually reach all the way down. Okay, this one has a lot of different settings. We're gonna turn it to mist. So already, as far as time savings, this one was a fraction of the traditional wet pour. So this is just a standard garden hose that all residential homes will have. We have the nozzle on the mist. And um, we're, literally, we're literally just going to let it sit there and do its thing. We're going to come back every so often, give it another gentle mist. And then as we believe the surface is hardening up, we'll come back with more water. We're going to let both pores cure for 24 hours. Tomorrow I'll be back. We'll strip the forms 
and we'll compare the differences. I think I'll whack them with mallets. We'll see which one is stronger or if they're the same. If they're anywhere close to the same, of course, everybody's going to do the dry pour method because it's so easy. Okay, both are cured. We have the traditional wet pour method here where you premix it, and then we have the dry pour method over here. Now, go ahead and check out the comparison. Come on in. The traditional method, you can clearly see the surface is better because as you trowel that, whether uh, a wooden tool or a steel tool, it's going to bring the cream to the surface. The aggregate, the stone will go down to you. So it clearly have a better surface there. Now over in the dry pour, you actually can see stone. Some people like that look. It's called exposed aggregate. Some people do like that look. Um, let's break the forms apart. This is the traditional pour. This looks solid slab all the way through, three and a half inches thick. Looks very consistent, looks very good. Or here we go. I don't know what this is going to look like myself. Okay, you can see more what's called honeycombing, where the product isn't as consistent as the traditional. But I will tell you, it's better than I expected. I thought it was going to look like absolute garbage. It looks better than I thought. That's the underneath side of the dry pour. Still had good moisture contact there. Here's the underneath side of the traditional wet pour. And that looks absolutely perfect. That looks perfect. Traditional wet pour, dry pour. Very similar. The dry pour looks better than I expected. I'll tell you that. It was so much easier to produce that product <laughs> than pre-mix. This is a 10-pound sludge hammer. I do want to do a little bit of stress testing. Let's take my work truck and drive over both of them see how strong they are. This is my work truck. Let's run over these concrete pads and see if they hold up. First, the wet pour. Next, let's try the dry pour. Hey, this is the dry pour. I thought it was all gonna be brittle and fall apart. I thought it would not be able to hold up my work truck. This result has surprised me. This is the 10 pound sludge hammer. By the way, when I was moving the two concrete slabs, I did notice the dry pour was a touch flakier than the traditional pour. In fact, I left this edge facing you so you can see that. Come on in so you can see that. It actually was flaking, honeycombing pretty bad. That's going to be the risk with a dry pour. The quality will be inconsistent and you don't know the quality. Whereas you do traditional pour, it should last many, many years. All right, I'm gonna drop this from two feet and the dry pour two feet okay that shook it that shook it but they survived four blows damage the surface a little bit the slab is still intact let's do four blows of the dry pour Okay, now you can clearly see the difference. The dry pour fell apart like a, like a uh, dry cake or something. Conclusion, the dry pour is so much easier. I can see why the internet videos are blowing up and everybody wants the ease of install of dry pour. It was so easy just to pour the concrete mix in, level it and just start to add your water. The traditional pre-mix, a lot more work but I do believe you're gonna get a better product here and it's gonna last many, many years. The fact is you're doing hard work anyways. You're clearing the topsoil, you're building forms, you're bringing in sand, tamping down the base if need be, correcting the greater level, maybe for a sidewalk. So the fact is when you're doing concrete, you're already doing a tremendous amount of work anyways. A little bit of extra work will get you a good product that will last for many, many years. But if you had a very, very small, out of the way area and you have no experience of concrete and you want to try dry pour be my guest go ahead you might like your results but i don't think it's going to stand up to the test of time i don't think it's going to last for years and years without cracking and and damage hey let me know what you'll do in the comments down below i want to hear from you let me know if you have tried dry pour if you have worked with concrete i want to hear your stories hey guys i know you can do this yourself i'll see you next week